How's it going, Ed? Oh, it's going. <laughs> it's been a busy couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. We got a whole house full of people showing up for Easter, and so I've got a lot of. Wonderful. There's... Hi, Jeffrey. Hi. Hi, Jeffrey. There's so much good music around Easter time. Yep. They're usually playing Bach, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do it. They, <laughs> yeah, if you have time to listen to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always, I always find that uh, all that Christian stuff kind of depressing, but the music is beautiful, you know. A, a lot of it, a lot of it is, and it can be, um, uh, especially when you get into like the German Gothic cathedrals. They can be very. Uh, Doomy and gloomy. <laughs> yes, just a little bit. <laughs> I have a Chinese. I have a Chinese. Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Jeffrey? Yeah, I sang the two passions two years in a row. Oh wow! According to Saint John and the second passion according to Saint Matthew. So, <laughs> what are, are you a baritone or a bass? Or? I'm a baritone. Yes. Wonderful. What is it? You sang in St. Matthew Passion? Did you sing one of the roles or were you in the chorus? Or what? in the chorus, but still, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of music. Yeah. Be, be, being there is not being square. Yeah. I bet that's a thrilling experience. <laughs> it is. Huh? It is amazing. Yeah. I always think the chorus people have the most fun. Because <laughs> if they miss an, if they, you know, if they're a little sour, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but they get the benefit of all those voices all around them, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Exhilarating. Uh, I'm sure there's someone in the audience going, Did you hear that guy up there in the fourth row? <laughs> yeah, usually, um, a good choir master won't let you um, slide do that yeah. on your fellow singers. Oh, yeah. That's right. You gotta right raise all the boats. Hey, Zach. Exactly. Exactly. Hi, Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. Welcome. Um, just Hi. just a quick mention uh, to you, Marco, and to everyone. I actually only have about twenty five minutes, but I I did have a little block, and I just thought that if it was okay, I might jump in anyway, just to give a little bit of time. So, however, th my time can be useful. Um, yeah. I, Works, works for me. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. whatever, whatever, whatever is needed. I have a bit of, a, of an agenda, and I don't, I don't mean I have a personal agenda, although that <laughs> perhaps as well. But I mean that I uh, posted an agenda <clears throat> to the topic for for this um, call, and um, you know, without being overly rigid, uh, I, I want to follow some kind of structure. Yeah. Uh, so whenever. Um, but you may that you that that may still allow you. I mean, we're just checking in, and you know, I did notice I did notice the agenda, and I would be more than happy to at least share some of my own thoughts about the Writers Underground. Although I did notice that that came probably after my twenty five minute mark. So, you know, here's a, my only suggestion for that. And then I'm mm -hmm. you know light and loose. I'm kind of in the middle of a billion things right now. But I wanted to I wanted to kind of be here because I knew I had like a minor window. Mm -hmm. if there's any possibility that we could move that little piece even forward. And I mean, I probably only have like a minute to share just some general thoughts. I mean, I'm sure you guys are thinking similar things and around what's possible. Um, mm -hmm. But that uh, would be it. Why don't, uh, well, I'd le mm -hmm. let's, let's think. Um, and if not, that's okay too, Marco, you know, cause I also thought I wasn't sure I was going to make it. I can also write like a little paragraph around just my own thoughts. And once again, I don't think they're going to be any, particularly novel compared to you guys. Cause I'm, you know, I think we're all on the same. Well, Go ahead. Well, here's what, here's what I'm thinking on the agenda is I, I you know, I, this is improvised. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to really going to happen this way, but I was thinking we'd just take 10 minutes just to chat, uh, check in, check our mics, etc., um, And that we do a little meditation, mm -hmm. be like three minutes. So that's 13 minutes, but that could be less. That could be like, you know, we can do five minutes of check-in and just go do a little meditation. And then I could have a very brief intro. That's, I was planning like five minutes, but I don't know. Uh, it could be less than that. Um, but it's not going to be much more than that. Uh, and then if you want to go first, uh, Zachary, after that, that would leave enough time. 
Well, you know, another option as well is I know we potentially have our Writers Underground meeting this Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, we could also just leave that piece to that time as well, just so the agenda can get as much time as possible. And my, you know, my present here can just be more intentional and just relaxing into that agenda too. So that's also a possibility. Why don't we do that? Uh, because yeah. what I, I mean, part of um, what got a little bit mixed up and I talked about this with Jeffrey and Doug um, and Caroline yesterday is that the focus of this meeting has sort of sh it started in one broader place. And then I didn't, I wasn't sure we were going to be able to pull off that kind of more ecumenical type of meeting that represents all the different, you know, aspects and projects and sub projects uh, of cosmos. <clears throat> so I thought, let's just focus this on, on the cafe and the series of conversations that we've been developing here over the last, you know, six plus months or so, and use that then as a kind of template where we could go through a similar uh, iterative or visioning kind of process with respect to the different areas. So we could do the same kind of thing, actually, in, in Writers Underground. Um, and then we could work toward uh, a more whole, a more holistic, like cosmos wide sort of like put all our minds together and like, what is this big, you know, what is this thing? Mm -hmm. But I wonder if, well, I, I got the sense that we just need more time and that mm -hmm. there hasn't been like enough sort of soil building around different particular conversations and spaces. And uh, I should, like, although I'm anxious to move things forward and go fast and, you know, um, build things, uh, it's just going to be a little more organic, I, I suppose. And so, um, yeah, if you want, if we want to shift that writer's underground discussion to Thursday, that would be great. That sounds great. Cool. So, you know, who used I to like say cool like that. Ken Wilber used to say cool like that. <laughs> that just came through. Um, sorry, Jeffrey. Marco, I like your questions here. So what, what, where is our, unsaid? how do we put our unthinking into practice? Uh, a lovely question. Yeah, well, this is one of those prefixes that, you know, uh, could become a slippery slope, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have much less problems with un and non than I do with, with hyper and meta and, 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 and post meta. So, I agree. You know, the un, the uns and nons uh, are underrepresented in the, the prefixual universe, I think. <laughs> Except for non-dual. I, I, don't, I don't say non-dual anymore, actually. I don't describe anything as non-dual. Because it presupposes dual, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> I think that's a wise decision, Mark. <laughs> I don't think anyone knows what non-dual is. It's a buzzword that just, I think, wore itself out. Just it's sort of like neo neo Nazis or whatever. <laughs> I love that you just combined neo Nazi and non tool. I think that's really <laughs> wonderful and hilarious. And in some ways, really right. <laughs> yeah. I saw one of them down at the demo last week, uh, non dual neo Nazi. Mm. I just watched Lenny Riefenstahl. And I was preparing for um, the minor gesture, so I've yeah. been reading up uh, on the books that I already have by Erin Manning, and she does a wonderful essay on Leni Riefenstahl's um, the Olympia, the Olymp about the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jesse Jesse Owens is in it. Mm. Uh, some footage of Jesse Owens. So I just watched it because I never had seen it, and mm. it, it's actually quite impressive. For a, you know, for a Nazi, <laughs> you know, I think I haven't watched it because I'm very biased about being, you know, Nazis. And I realized, well, she's quite amazing. And her whole take was, you know, I was just a professional doing my job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, was, that was the party line all the way up to Nuremberg. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And she recently died. I think she was 104, you know, when uh, she died. She was. I, uh, I always found that that was like one of the cosmos's most interesting quirks when you know those multiple lines of development where you have that really low nazi line and then they have this other incredible line right. i mean at like right. uh, today who do we have we have you know like rush limbaugh is kind of an iteration of that and then ann coulter you yeah. listen to ann coulter and there are times where i sit there and i go that was incredible that was brilliant it mm. makes either no sense and it's totally non-factually based or something, but it's, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> and then you have that other guy who used to write for Breitbart. And I think he's like the third iteration. What's his mm. name? Marco, you probably know. Come on. He's that. Bannon? 
No, he's not. No, he's the, the guy, yeah. guy is Theodolus yeah. or something. He's like yeah. one, another one of these, one of God's great prototypes, which is like incredibly low ethical, moral line of development and linguistically and charismatically off the charts. Mm-hmm. And so I just kind of along those lines, I mean, they're still making them. <laughs> they're still, <laughs> Cosmos is still turning <laughs> fellows out and all the lower lines of development, that's who they point to and say, you see, we are right because that mm-hmm. lower line connects to that lower line over them, but not to the higher line. So anyway. It's still- complicated because my favorite uh, orchestral conductor was, was Herbert von Karajan. Mm-hmm. And I found out but that was Hitler's favorite conductor. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So I had a moment of like a glitch there. Oh, uh, wow. This yeah. was years ago. Uh, but I just found that, you know, well, you're laughing. I think I, you, you appreciate where I'm coming from. Yeah, you know? I certainly do. <laughs> and you realize, I didn't realize we had that much in common. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So we all, we all probably have many cultural uh, affiliations yeah. with people who are totally loathsome. <laughs> yeah. If I remember, though, wasn't he kind of just this magnificent, beautiful figure, if I recall? Because I remember Herbert von Karajan. Oh, yeah. he certainly was. Yeah. He was and a I great like Wagnerian conductor, and he, he, he conducted everything. To work for, though. He was an autocrat, sure. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. So, I'm, I'm I just sure remember Hitler, you know, almost like Mussolini and some of the others, they really loved the beautiful, big, strong, masculine figures who just kind of walked out, and they were like, now that's... Right. You know, that's the example of masculinity and where the Aryan race want to take it. So Yeah, he was very charismatic. Yeah. Marco? Well, could we do a mic check with Doug? Duggins? Mic check. Hello. <clears throat> well, I guess we're all here. <laughs> Don't overdo it there, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> So I thought uh, well, I thought we'd follow a bit of an agenda. It's not too complex. Uh, I thought we could begin to do more, you know, process, ritual type of grounding mm-hmm. um, in structure, um, mm-hmm. experimenting with structure as well. So this is, like I said, improvised. It's uh, not um, meant to be permanent or um, mm-hmm. official in any way. But um, I thought we'd so- start with a brief meditation. Uh, by which I just mean silent, however we wish to, not following any particular methodology or, or uh, guidance. Um, and then I could do a brief intro, as I was saying to Zachary earlier, and then we could take individual turns, uh, giving what could be updates, what could be questions, what could be what's really coming through or on your mind, uh, relating to this uh this cosmos cafe these conversations that we've been having and what you see uh happening and what you would like to have happen uh if you want to uh answer that question um then i thought we'd switch our focus from the individual to the collective and have a more of an open type frame for envisioning that next step uh we've taken a, a bit of a pause in the last week or two and um, and we've developed a conversation. We've developed lines of thought, uh, interconnections between those those different lines, open loops, closed. There's there's a lot going on here. And so, how can we begin to develop a um, as John I, I'm trying to avoid the prefixes, but a sort of meta reflexive uh, awareness? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm going to buzz you every time you have a paper. <laughs> 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 um, I deserve it. So um, I should be docked like Litcoin or something. currency or something. Um, and then uh, I, left, uh, I left some time at the end of this agenda just for a more open, non-purposive uh, type of uh, talking, uh, reflecting, or really just shooting the shit or whatever comes, whatever wants to happen. Uh, so if that's um, an, amenable to everybody, uh, I suggest we begin. And I would invite John, actually, since you have a real bell. I, I only have the iPhone bell. And yet, last time I used it, it, it glitched out on me. Uh, maybe you could give us three minutes or so. Okay. Shall we? Everyone relaxed.
Okay. Well, the image that came to mind as just the, as the bell was ringing uh, was at the lemonade stand <laughs> somewhere in in some un, um, un, uh, undefined location. I'm not sure exactly where the stand is. But this is a ca- cafe um, with grown-ups, uh, so you probably need some caffeine at the stand as well, coffee, uh, other types of um, victuals, refreshments, etc. Uh, a whole menu, perhaps, uh, of um, uh, items that we enjoy and that we think others would enjoy. And... The conversation specifically, I think, that we've been engaging in have had many overlaps and underlaps and other mm, resonances uh, with or interconnections with streams of thought or conversations that have been happening in other places, not just on our forum, but in our own lives and in other contexts. But the cafe, I think, over these 14 plus sessions that, that we've done with some prelim- previous kind of proto sessions before they were named the cafe. And that came out of uh, conversations with TJ and um, a few others, I think over in the bubbles, the original bubbles uh, uh, conversations uh, threads. Um, that concept just be- became a container or I think a, a, an attraction point for all sorts of things that didn't fit exactly anywhere else and could come into a common space and um, mingle uh, and engage in some sort of lateral uh, type of uh, reproductive process or (laughs) um, uh, propagation. And so I've been interested to see really how this has taken shape and how the themes of space and time have transmuted through uh, conversations about being and about being in the world and then about the technologies that we use and the relationship between technology and, and consciousness and the sort of tension there, which has been one of the, I think, um, uh, you know, areas of creative or generative friction uh, in, in the space. I've been curious to see how, more than curious, I've been passionately following uh, it unfolding and um, and I feel that uh, with the group that's been kind of core and coming back week after week, and the sort of the other orbits of of uh, of you know, individuals who've been um, like Zachary, like coming occasionally, and we're all in different kinds of orbits. They're all somewhat elliptical, uh, and um, you know they're complex. Uh, so how do we? focus that a bit more and how do we do what we've already been doing and what's already been growing between us and through us um, to how do we bring that to greater fruition that's one of the questions that I have and I don't have much more to say anything to say as far as logistics for the meeting because we discussed that before but but I'd like to invite each of us to reflect or to give our own personal update or take or what have you. It doesn't have to follow my model or my mo- mode exactly on um, really what this, you know, what, what is up for us, what me- what matters to us individually uh, in relation to whatever is happening here together. And, um, you know, where's that going? Where could that go? Uh, so before we go there, the questions that I posted as, um, as seed questions, uh, I'll just re- I'll just uh, you know, uh, utter them uh, here into the into the space, and then um, open it up to uh, you all to um, to participate. And maybe you know, Zachary, if you have to go early, and if you still have time, you could you could go first, uh, and then whoever wants to go after could. Yeah, I also might I also might not just to say because I think these are such great questions. I might even just stew with them. Okay. And then maybe share my own if, if it's okay. If I think I would like to think most of us will be there on Thursday, share it's some okay thoughts too. Yeah, 
because those are big and I, I do I do want to steep with them. They're good. So um, so here are the questions, uh, and these were just again improvised. They're not um, necessarily even coming from a, a, a you know a sustained and deep consideration. It's just what's on my mind. Uh, what formats are we developing? Uh, what styles, roles, or storylines? What's the emergent, preemptively buzz me meta narrative? Mm. Question: <laughs> how, do we, how, how do we invite people into these conversations? What other conversations can we spawn? Uh, what deeper questions are we getting to? Where where is our unthought? And just a note on that: uh, when I was uh, an undergrad, one of my um, advisors, uh, he was a, a PhD student, uh, but a very um, serious and sensitive deep soul uh, was writing his dissertation on the unthought uh, that was the topic of his dissertation and it was this profoundly um, s- s- inward um, self deconstructing um, type of passionate meditation on on the that space or that kind of pre space that he was naming by this word, the unthought. So it's been uh, something I've been thinking, giving thought to for a couple of decades. And I have his dissertation in a binder uh, here and I've been meaning to get back to it for literally like two decades. Uh, so it's not, it's, it's not um, gratuitous that I use this term. Um, how do we put our unthinking into practice? Uh, can we become technically more efficient, better manage our scheduling and media production? This is a pain point for me. So um, I hope we could uh, address it at some point. Uh, and then what happens next? And that said, I'll shut up or um, not shut up. I'll just kind of open up more in, in, into listening. Uh, <laughs> and um, whoever wants to go, uh, please. Can welcome. we have a minute taker? Or, or at least I would love to have someone who's maybe able to at least jot down some of the best nuggets that come from this you know really just we're, we're going to tape this it is being taped yeah and then so i can listen to it and i can write stuff down on your third viewing uh john that would be great to have just at least some bullets because <laughs> yeah. i don't have you know so I have, I have... anyone else so who feel like they want to do that too because we'll put we'll pull out different things for sure mm-hmm. so high po- high future john and high post future john <laughs> <laughs> I always and thank you. Anyway, so um, yes. Well, that, that's certainly one thing I would even classify under the kind of scheduling logistics. How do we capture what we, you know, what we're producing, and uh, not necessarily do something with it, but put it in a place where it's all where we could all at least see it. Uh, I, I, I'm. John, you've expressed, and we can come back to this, or we can return to this as an issue later, but you've expressed, uh, you know, the sense of starting over and the sense of losing things and dynamic reference points. And uh, so that's all part of, like, you know, what I, what I hope we could talk about as well. I'll start if you don't mind. Our cafe sessions remind me of something that that used to be much more prevalent here in Germany, but it isn't anymore. It's called the Stammtisch. And in every little community at the, and there was a time when every little community had its own little Wirtschaft, its own little Gasthaus, its little meeting place. It was right across the street from the church. It's where the guys went in the morning for Frühstücken, which was... Um, early glasses while the women sat in next next door and listened to whoever it was was uh, singing and praying. But uh, at the Stammtisch, nobody could sit at that table because it was a big ashtray. It had a bell on it and a sign, and, and it sat in the middle of a round table. And this is where people from the village would meet regularly. Sometimes there was maybe it would be the local farmers met on Tuesday nights, and it could be that the doctor, the the uh, the pastor and the the teacher in the village they met uh, with a couple of their academic colleagues on Monday nights or whatever it was, and they just got together and they 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 
kind of shared time together. And they had mutual interests, of course, and so they chatted about things. And and it, and it really it was a it was a high point of the week for for all of the people that got there, and all the people that part that participated in that. And if you went in, you know, as a stranger, and you sat down at the table, somebody would come over and tell you, "Get up, you can't sit here." This is this is reserved. If any one of the people who was in one of these stumptishes came in, they were allowed to sit at this table. So sometimes you had what we call today cross fertilization, where people from the different stumptishes, although they knew everyone, you know, we're not talking about huge metropolitan areas. You know, the the village I live in has a population of 350. It's twice as big as the village my my wife comes from. You know, so, you know, we're <laughs> and her father came from one that was only about 75, 80 people. You know, we're not talking about huge conglomerates. So you knew who these folks were. But this was a time when and uh, when you got together and you talked differently to one another because you simply spoke as you as you felt more than anything else. And that that's what our cafe sessions remind me of. That's why I come. I, I like the fact that that we don't have a program. I like the fact that somebody says, oh, I, I read this, it's kind of interesting, and somebody says, oh, that really looks good, and we sit down and we chat about it. And I do look at a lot of the things we do as chats, even though some of the things that we've talked about have been a little more, uh, let's say, uh, high-level, complicated, could be very, very, they are very deep in, the, in their essence, I would say. But the thing that I like about it the most is no matter what it is that we talk about, no matter who's there, or what, what the, the main core was or the reason we got together, there's always something that I take from that, that I, that I find myself repeating, thinking, bringing into influencing the things that I do in my everyday life outside of that cafe. These, these very, I'm going to just call them, you know, from my perception, very simple chats, even though they are about complex topics and whatnot. But we talk about them in a way that is, that it's, it's non-pretentious. You know, we just kind of say what we're thinking and we kind of react to what the other one said. And, 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 and we're in a, in a place where even, even when we don't see things the same way, Nobody's getting really irritated about all of that. It's just like, oh, yeah, well, that's another way that one could look at it, and that's a way to think about it, and that's something that you can take out of it. And so what I, what I actually like the most about them is they're not going anywhere, as odd as that may seem, because it's, it's, a, it's a place and a time where you can just kind of be and express and receive and enjoy and, and cooperate. And so I, and I like that part about it. That doesn't mean that they couldn't be more structured or there might be more to be gained from or whatnot, but just as an, an initial, so input feedback to, to how I look at them. For me, they're my weekly stammtisch, where I can go and listen to people I like to be with, and they say things that I actually like to hear for the most part, because it gets me thinking and refeeling what I'm doing in my everyday life. So. Can I respond to that? Well, I hope somebody does. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, how do you pronounce that? Stumtish. Stumtish. Yeah, stumtish. Yeah, that reminds me of my experience of the village, the barrio in the Philippines when I was there with uh, my wife, Rain's family, right. and almost every day they would be gathered around a stumtish type yeah. dwelling, uh, a sheltered area, so they could sit there mm -hmm. and basically discuss politics um, in the community, um, mm -hmm. play card games, um, mm -hmm. avoid their wives or whatever they were doing. <laughs> and, you do what you got to do. But that reminds me of, I think it's Gemeinschaft politics, or at least yes. uh, commun yeah. is that community? That is community. Yeah, Gemeinschaft is community. Uh, so when you have something... It's very interesting. The word gemein itself means common. But if you are gemein, you're being mean. So it's one of those words that still like means what it means and its opposite as well. You know, so it can have those two. But a gemein, when you say gemein shaft, there's nothing mean about that at all. That's the, the encompassing community. 
Yeah, <clears throat> I try to be nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but in the, the Listening Society book that proposes the metamodernism uh, idea, uh, one of the six political views that he proposes in this second book that he's supposedly uh, completing here soon is this idea of Gemeinschaft chef politics re kind of reinstating the community. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I just saw what you mentioned there as a bridge into kind of what the cafe is about. And I just introduced a book there. That's a topic we were proposing at one point. And um, so in the future, if we feel comfortable uh, talking about that, it would fit mm -hmm. right in with what we're talking about here. So um, that's about all I have to say there. Did you, did you have more to share, Ed? No, no, no. I was, I was done. I was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. those, those are my impressions of what we're doing. I like that we're not going anywhere. <laughs> I like that we're just here. <laughs> uh, huh? I mean, that that's kind of required for thinking in, in a certain way. Uh, I mean, there's a certain kind of thinking that maybe needs to happen under pressure and needs mm -hmm. to be responsive to, um, you know, stresses. Uh, but if that's the only kind of thinking that you're doing, um, you're going to get sick. <laughs> you're going to get, you know, and, um, and that, you know, that kind of illness is going to radiate outwards. So uh, to me, the one of the important, and this is, I think, just a reflection or maybe a you know, uh, corroboration of, of what you're pointing to is that um, that that there should be space and time in you know amp, in in some ample some sufficient amount uh, to do think to think and and that also comes with this, you know the things that I know you don't like it but Sloterdijk talks about in terms of the spherological types of aspects the sonosphere uh, the media sphere these mm, containers, uh, these non-containing containers or whatever you want to call them, it's imprecise to put it that, you know, exactly in those terms. But the qualities that we bring to the spaces have something to do with how we think. So in a real physical cafe, for example, the music, the ambiance, the lighting, uh, the, the, the food, the beverage, etc., would all contribute to the quality of the discourse, I think, that, that occurs there. And that's part of that, like, I think part of why one of the inspirations for Sloterdijk is Bachelard's, Bachelard's Poetics of Space. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's probably more focused, I haven't read it, but more focused on physical space. Here we have virtual space. And so the rules or the parameters are, are a little bit different. Um, but the fact that there is such a space that occurs with uh you know with um regularity uh and or ritual even uh uh i'm it's been one of the great positive things one of the po very positive things i think that that have that has emerged uh, it's interesting marco that you um you talk about working under pressure versus, you know, and so this idea of not going somewhere. So in the fall, when the cafes were running, I almost didn't come because my fall session is really so busy at the university that, you know, even time, finding the play, the time in the, in the week to come and listen to whatever was going on was not easy. But in the winter session and the summer session, uh, I don't have those kind of constraints on my time in the same way. So I've, I've come to, I think, almost every cafe session in the winter since the beginning of January. And like the, the, you, the, like the others, I've enjoyed them thoroughly, but they require this um, unhooking uh, this uh, uh, in order to sort of 
I don't know why it is, but it, it seems to be part and parcel of the exercise. So, um, and I mean, I might also, I might, you know, I was, anyway, it's a slightly different comment, I guess, but it's related. Um, so, um, uh, somebody was asking me lately, are you looking forward to the end of the session? Well, I sort of said, well, no, I like what I'm doing right now every day. So why would I look forward to the next day? You know, so he sort of said, oh, carpe diem. And yeah, that's part of it. But um, it's just being present for what's going on, you know, in the immediate. And so there's a lot of that in this cafe, being present for each other, being present for our invited guests when we've had invited guests, um, being present for, as you say, the, so another an related anecdote context. So we were talking about the fact that I was, uh, we were talking about, um, um, uh, Bach music at the beginning when we came on and I mentioned that I had sung the Passion According to St. Matthew and the Passion According to St. John at different times when I was involved in the choir, so in, in the chorus. And um, one of the things about music uh, that, I, you know, I've had different choir masters over the years, but one of the things they often say, the choir masters, is that it, music is not in the music. It's in the spaces between the notes. That's where the music takes place. Uh, and it's always so, in, again, it's this idea that what we're doing here, so it, it comes back to your question about thought and unthought. In a sense, the cafe is allowing, it's a rhythmic activity, and it's a rhythmic activity that allows space to exist in the spaces between what's going on, right? So that's part of why this, so, um, you know, I, I could say the cafe has grown on me, but in a way it's, as I say, it's a consequence of being able to slow down in order to appreciate it. So I, I've thoroughly enjoyed it and, hmm. so I, I think that's what I have to say. Well, I guess it's my turn. I'm, I'm thinking about, um, you know, that call, and then you wait, and then there's an echo. Um, I often have a delayed reaction. It isn't what happens in the cafe. It's sort of what happens in between cafe sessions. Um, because I'll, something will come back that, w that was said, maybe just uh, that may not have been developed, or maybe something that was developed, um, but that I didn't have any position on. But something happens um, between sessions uh, that I find um, very um, compelling. Um, it's sort of like the, the, the visible and the invisible, um, the inside, the outside, um, the self and the other. Um, those, those boundaries are not physical boundaries. And they have a kind of, um, uh, uh, when does the personal pronoun I become a we? Um, what's that boundary? And, um, I'm, and, and of course, a chorus is a great example of what happens when you can coordinate different voices to make music and to, to explore what's in the in-between. And that musical space and, um, physical space and semantic spaces. These are all different kinds of space that really intrigue me. So I, I really do applaud all of us for showing up. I think the core group that keeps showing up um, has a great influence on what happens next. And I think that when, on the forums, when we, when we share our reflections, and that's usually where, um, when, we, when we write to one another about our impressions or we share a video, that's where those delayed reactions start to come forward and I'm able to um, share. That's why I like having those videos so I can look at the video and hear it because often when I'm here 
this feels like a, a performance and I don't feel myself, um, it's very clear to me when I watch the video that there are a lot of things that I just missed that just went right over my head. So it's a really, it's great to have the video to, um, to uh, do a, what was it that metaphor you used of, of that play by play kind of analysis that sports teams do, you know, when they look back at a, at a performance. So I think that's, uh, that's when that self-reflexive capacity starts to kick in. So I think this is a very wonderful use of the technology that we have. Um, um, I think it has a quality of, you know, sitting around the, the, the picket fence or the out on the porch in your rocking chair, which is great. And it also has that, um, if we can capture or catch some of the tempo rhythms that are very unique to each of us, to me, that, that creates enormous intensity because we don't remember very much unless there's an there's affect and that's a that, i think they did a test uh, college students they um learned material while they were had uh, alcohol in their system and uh, they found out that um they could recall that material that they learned while they were drunk when they were drunk <laughs> <laughs> so they had to get drunk again in order to recall that. So uh, learning is very state dependent. So I think the states that we're in, the more resourceful we are, the more open and collaborative we're going to be. So uh, that's what I'm dedicated to. And I, I'm um, really grateful to all of us for um, co-sponsoring one another in this great effort, because I, I believe we, we really do uh, need to pay attention. Uh, and this, this I feel, uh, has honed my own uh, attentional capacity quite a bit because as I go away from these events and I start thinking about the material that we read or the points of view that were shared, it'll come up and I'll go, oh, you know, I think this is something that Ed would enjoy or this is something that Marco would like or one of the members here who shows up, something that I, I think that they would be uh, interested in. And I think that is a, creates a, a sort of a, a tractor. So I'll move in a certain direction that I would not have if I had not had that uh, experience of, um, you know, multiple voices um, creating an intense uh, zone of uh, optimal kind of ten intensity. So I'm a great believer in those, the, the, those, um, those rhythms, uh, those tempos. And that's why I loved sharing some of the clean language processes and getting some uh, pictures um, after you had a had an interview with somebody where they were into the languaging part, then to make a picture of that, that made sense for that person. And then to language some more about those pictures. And then for each person to present their picture in an ensemble of other people's pictures. I think something emerges that one could not predict. And uh, it's often, then we have the, 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 um, the intro, I think it's very interesting is how to articulate, re-articulate and re-embody um, what we learn from those kinds of um, intense sharings of our, interior, of our interiors. I think something starts to resonate, the interiors start to resonate. And I believe that uh, Jennifer Gidley says this very well in that video that I shared, that, um, that she says, um, you know, a lot of people want to go out into outer space. And she says uh, she would like to go to, to explore inner space. She thinks that's where we're really way behind. <laughs> you know? And I sort of, and I definitely agree with her there. So anyway, um, thank, thank you all for your participation. I'm, I'm hoping we can continue the, the uh, gathering this high quality data and rich experiences. And, uh, Explore what happens next. Does anyone else uh, would anyone else like to just share more from the personal uh, point of view? I mean, I guess I can just say that I've I've really enjoyed tearing myself away from what recently has been just a very hectic life, <laughs> lots of levels. Um, 
And this was, it's kind of ironic because my wife and I, we are all about, I mean, we bought a tiny home for God's sakes. I mean, we're really all about getting completely out of the system and somehow still maintaining a connection to the system. But we're really not about, um, I don't want to create like a large thriving practice. Like that's never been, you know, that whole thing has never really been my agenda. I've really, you know, I love working with individuals. and I love that part of it, but I'm really a hermit and a writer at heart. I mean, I just want to sit in a room and just write and do nothing else. And then, you know, hug my daughter and look into the eyes of my wife. And I mean, that's it. I mean, you know, so there's an element that underpins everything that I think we're doing, uh, which is that, um, wah, wah, uh, no thought, uh, no space, no mind, non-dual, uh, trans, etc., cetera, et cetera, that, that I really deeply resonate with. And I really, I really have felt that with you guys. And that's been something that's been incredibly nourishing, even if I haven't, uh, been here as much as I've wanted to just to know that you're here and you're doing this. Um, and that so many capacities are really online, um, and exploring in the way that it is being explored here is incredibly, uh, reassuring to me, uh, almost existentially reassuring. Um, so there's kind of that whole piece that I, just just to kind of sit back and just not even have to do anything or say anything that i feel is really really important and i do want to keep nourishing that in some kind of supportive appropriate way um and then of course there's you know this whole other piece where i mean and i, I just will kind of highlight that piece one more for me like everything to a certain degree is beholden to that <laughs> You know, and then from that place, I am interested in works of art. I am interested in flirting and fondling the marketplace. Um, you know, I do, you know, I am interested in producing things. I am interested in seeing like, how can something like metapsychosis uh, create more influence, can create more attraction. But once again, I say all of that beholden to that first piece. Um, and there's always like a nice creative tension in there, you know, I mean, throughout my writer's life and perhaps you guys experienced the same thing. I mean, how many times have I, you know, dived in grappling as much agency as I can only to find it thwarted by time resources, you name it, and then have no other recourse, but to fall back into that surrender, you know? which thank God I've had meditation and all of my spiritual, you know, musculature over the years that I've trained in, because I think I would have driven myself mad the amount of times that I've had to give up certain projects <laughs> and only by falling back into that really peaceful place of surrender and think, you know, and kind of, you know, just kind of, yeah, just kind of giving into the mother's milk of, of awareness and consciousness has been just a real savior for me. Um, and it's given me the ability not to be schizophrenic and in, in, in those moments when it has come back and I thought, Oh my God, now it's back again. So we're going to pick up this piece of work again <laughs> to try to rehabilitate this baby again. I mean, that's a very painful process. You guys know. So, um, with all of that said, uh, yeah, I'm interested in the, the, the dual aspects of this. And I'm interested in really being able to maybe engage with both really, really passionately. Um, really, because I'm at this point in my life, I can really feel it, even though I'm still very much working. I'm hoping in the next, even in the next three to four months to even have a little bit more time. And the only reason I was able to write at all was that I suddenly had like a couple of hours each morning, maybe three or four days a week. That wasn't there for years. And I'm hoping that to expand even more. Um, and I'm very excited to, you know, I had some of the lines that you're thinking about, Marco, at least I think you're thinking about, uh, I'm very interested to dive into, um, assertively and try to create something, um, just for fun. I'm not, you know, not to grapple with it. I'm not interested in clutching at straws or there's no desperation here, but if we're going to play the game in some way on that level, on that side of the street, I want to play it. I <laughs> feel like. I want to play it as, as well and as assertively as I can. Uh, once again, never not beholden to that first piece of surrender, piece of 
Um, and so that's kind of what's just bubbling up in me, you know, before we even step into any specific thoughts of which once again, I'm totally happy to dive into like actual action plans. That's, that's my kind of, that's where I'm at at the moment. A couple things. Uh, one is that um, I hadn't seen have the, how this would really unfo unfold, but it makes sense just from a structural, morphological perspective that in a group such as this, that there'd be kind of varying sort of degrees of engagement or participation and that there'd be more of like an or not like you know, a regimented kind of um, show, you know, showing up where, but people who come every time, people who come every couple of times, every few times, more sort of ripples uh, from, from whatever the, the central activity is. Uh, you know, I may end up, you know, spiraling off in some other directions. If, as long as, you know, to me, it's important that the thing continues. Uh, and so part of my, um, desire to create structure, establish pattern, to have some s system and to have sustainability in the sense of economic and, uh, um, you know, like as a, as an ongoing enterprise, uh, is that I want it to live on. I think that, that, uh, that there's, there's something that we're developing in the realm of thought that's actually um, uh, a value. Uh, and it's a value to me because it's part of an ecosystem of things that's a, of, my, of life, really, right? I also have my wife and daughter and things I care about and my writing. And I see these conversations as creating the soil in which like like that my, my creative life can grow and that's how it's served and um and so I, i'm not interested in getting people's attention like that's that's a um i think a, a kind of exhausting and uh fruitless project um but i i i want you know people who wouldn't just enjoy what we're talking about just to ha to be able to to hear and to join yeah. us on the forum or maybe join us for a future conversation or what whatever might come of that uh there's a i i uh i'm happy about this i'm happy that that we can do this and i think the world needs more of it uh, <laughs> so um so how, 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 how can we bring that more in the, ge in the gesture of a gift than in the gesture of attempting to capture like a market? Um, right. Yeah, a market share or something like that. I just want to, do, to have the conversations that are enjoyable and that help me integrate my thoughts better and be more creative and be happier uh, and or get more truth <laughs> for that matter. There's that too. Uh, it's helpful to have other minds to uh, uh, provide feedback and perspective. Can I say one thing? Because I, I will have to go now, and I hope this hasn't been too disruptive, my kind of in and out. So I appreciate you guys just for kind of rolling with that. Um, but off the bat of that, Marco, I do believe there's something, um, you know, when I look at everything that's going on in the world right now, culturally, and I don't know how, to what degree you guys have felt this, but while everything is important in terms of race, in terms of gender, um, all of the battles that quote unquote we're fighting right now, there has been a part of me that has felt, um, you know, like kind of arriving 500 years too early or 200 years too early. I, I just, I don't think these are, I mean, these are important battles to have, but I personally don't feel that that's where, where I'm at. <laughs> feel like I've already made my decisions about all of these things. And I'd like to think that most of, most of us here have as well. It's like, this is, these are, there's no question about them. Um, 
and yet there is a battle that we're kind of fighting, or at least I'm certainly fighting. Um, and it's a different kind of battle. Um, and even to use the word battle is incorrect. It's not that, but an idea of birthing something and saying, Hey, this is important too. And obviously it has to do with consciousness. It has to do with so much of what I think goes on here. And yet I also know that it's a bridge too far right now. It's not, I mean, this, the, you know, the, the, the cultural zeitgeist isn't really there yet. Um, and so I've often felt out of step. Um, but tying into something like that, for me, gets me very alive and very excited around the fact that we know this is coming in some way. Like it is absolutely coming. Um, and we all have different perspectives around, you know, maybe different, you know, specific interests around each piece of that wave that's coming. It's going to, to crash over all of us or all of the world. And I don't know who said it, but there's this idea of, you know, kind of take that grappling hook and like shooting it forward and then pulling that wave towards us with works of art, with conversation, with all of these things in a way that when it does begin to percolate, it's just like, boom, this is, this already ground here. Um, and of course, you know, integral theorists have been doing that. Developmental psychologists have been doing that. Gebser was doing that, you know. I think there's no doubt that there's a lineage there, multiple lineages that, that we're kind of stepped into. And yeah, I'm just excited by that, I guess. Um, and I really look forward to continuing this on Thursday to whatever degree feels right. Um, so I'm going to hop off now, but um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks exactly. I really appreciate it. See you Thursday. Okay, I'll see you Thursday, guys. Bye. Can I, can I quote something? I'm not happy until I've quoted somebody. Because <laughs> um, I really enjoy it when someone says something that say, hey, I knew that. Mm. I'm reading this guy, uh, Heinz von Forrester. Um, he, was a, he was an early AI, and then he sort of started to get more complex and started to move into second order cybernetics. And I've been improvising around the idea of a third order um but he says something that i that makes sense to me and sort of captures a kind of um in, not impasse but a paradox for myself uh he's, he's talking about pattern pattern comes from papa pater it is the father whose stamp is printed across everything always looks exactly the same that is pattern this i would like to compare with mother a matrix, the matrix that embeds. In this way, I've gained parents, the papa, the pattern that connects, and the mama, the matrix that embeds. The papa is responsible for the pattern, and the mama makes sure that the pattern falls on fruitful ground in which it can blossom, thrive, and spread itself. And I feel like in my development, I've given a great deal of attention to pattern and meta pattern and the pattern that connects and the pattern that uh, organizes. So, um, but I also realized that that wasn't enough. And that comes, I think, from that, that, that first level of uh, that first order kind of uh, cybernetics where you're, where you're still in this uh, sort of subject object split. Then, uh, then you start to realize I, I, everything is observed by an observer. Um, everything is said also to someone. So this is one of Forrester's uh, observations that I think is so compelling that we don't talk to nobody. We talk to somebody else, even if they're not there. <laughs> Physically, we're still talking to somebody. Um, even if it's a, ver a variation on our own, um, on our own self. So I think um, getting into the, um, the mama um, the matrix, the uh, being sure that the pattern, once you've found the pattern that connects, that it falls on in, in soil that isn't, that's deep enough so that something that can, can develop roots. Um, because if you just have a lot of interesting seeds that, you know, you have beautiful seeds and you throw them on 
uh, soil that's too shallow, the birds are going to come pick pick them up and swallow them. I think this is a parable that, that Jesus had, um, something about this. But so can anyway, I, so I'm very I, drawn. I'm very I drawn to plant a quick seed, John. I want I want to call it a a mater pattern instead of a a mater pattern. Meta pattern. <laughs> <laughs> you say mater, I say pater, whatever. <laughs> anyway, that's my two cents. I, I just, I'm hoping that I found that it's very, the systems that um, our social systems and our communities are under, under siege and are being threatened. And I've seen um, uh, many networks that I was very engaged in have fallen apart under the stress. Uh, and I, and I, I mourn for that. I have it. So, but I'm, I'm hoping that something can, momentum can start to, uh, to, to gather around, you know, themes that we find relevant and that we can um, in, embed these possibilities into something that can then become actual. Because I'm, I'm very much a, I'm a, I'm a hands-on kind of guy, you know. I, I really like to touch things. Um, so anyway, that's where I feel like I've neglected some of my or where my bias has been it's uh or where my not 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 so much my bias but my conflict has been a yo-yo back and forth um to the to this to the grand narrative to the pattern to uh you know the actual hands-on kind of holding someone's hand or helping that old lady across the street or you know going out and doing grocery shopping for somebody who can't do that you know those kind of those kind of impulses, uh, b- both aspects of our nature have to be, uh, to, de- to develop, I believe, before we can start flourishing. Um, and I think so. Anyway, I, I hope I'm not rattling on too much, but I think this is, uh, something worth, uh, paying attention to that these, that the, the, the matrix, uh, and the, the, the pattern maker, the pattern detector uh, collaborate in each of us and in all of us together. And this is a very interesting quote, John, and you were uh, just recently reading German idealists. Have you got some kind of German now? We can stall. Are you hiding something from us, John? Uh, I, think it's a, I, think it, I think it's a past <laughs> life regression. <laughs> some photonic arc that you're... <laughs> yeah, I'm getting into Steiner lately, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah. Uh, you know, there's, talking about... Having, pa- you're having an influence on me, Ed. I think I, think, <laughs> I, think I have to blame it on you. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, if it makes you feel better, go right ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I've always been drawn to to German culture, even as, uh, to German music. I always loved music, um, but I have, um, you know, lots of antagonism uh, as well. So do I. I live here. Yeah. And, and, but now I'm starting to pick up on the philosophy uh, yeah. that I started, the, the idealists, the German idealists, yeah. and how influential they were to the. Uh, to the American transcendental movement yeah. in England, yeah. especially, they are all reading Goethe, you know, and Schiller. So, I think that, um, and I and, and I am very drawn to Goethe. So, I think that um, I, I'm going back now and looking at stuff that I skimmed, mm-hmm. and I'm realizing, oh wow, this guy Novalis, you know, they mm-hmm. they really had their, they they were really plugged in this this cosmic circuit. So now I believe I can uh, reread and review and go deeper than I was able to before um, because I've had some life experience and I sort of see, see some, some patterns there that I think are, that are, are, that are coming back around. And if we pay attention, I believe we might be able to find a soil for these, these, these patterns and these meta patterns, which are, which are returning. No doubt, because we're in this tremendous transition zone, and we need all the help we can get from the best of all the traditions that were, were previous to ours, and also keeping our mind, our eye on that prize, you know. And I think I like what Jennifer Gidley's talking about as a, being a futurist, but um, 
that we need to, that, that, that the innovator and the visionary is very future oriented. So b balancing those uh, is, is, is not easy, but it's, it can be quite fun if you have a collaborative sort of network you're in. So uh, we don't, because I think this is where genius is, mm -hmm. it emerges as I believe that is a theme I think that Marco's uh, developed quite a bit, that uh, genius doesn't come out of people who are in ivory towers or cut off from the street, um, but that uh, it emerges out of, out of mutual high regard and people who are uh, stimulating uh, sim you know, similar interests. I thought it was interesting that Gidley connected the connected modern education to the German idealists' idea of yes. Bildungsroman, uh, yeah. instead of um, or instead of primarily uh, the industrial factory system. Yeah. I, in my mind, I, I had seen the factory as the predecessor of the modern education system, and she sees it coming out of this tradition of character building, right? Of um, you know uh, this a hu uh, of will be cultivating a human a type of human being or a human being a human being a human a being human. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we could discuss that um, perhaps we should save that for a, d a specific cafe session mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I'm attracted to in Gidley is the 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 discourse around the sort of integration of integral ideas. Uh, the reason is that I've resisted really tr going there. I've resisted um, collapsing my thought into a, uh, a single systematic kind of all-encompassing view. You know, and that's my immune reaction to Wilbur. But there is something that all of these thinkers, these lineages are all onto or all talking about. And that something is more or less the same. They're seeing it in different ways, articulating different aspects of it. They have their, their different modes. Uh, and as I, I think Wilbur has one way of doing it, Gebser is another, a different kind of animal, uh, so to speak. Uh, Rudolf Steiner I have I haven't read maybe just very little I've read, uh, and not to mention uh, Aurobindo, Chardin, uh, and really we could find this integrative um, movement uh, much deeper than than even you know those those twentieth century and nineteenth century thinkers. So part of what I feel like is we might be doing. And this, this would not just be an exercise. I mean, this is in a way also ties into co-op, the cooperative building and, and the sort of cultural and institutional aspects of that is we're, we're in a way defining a tradition and we're, we're not just defining it to canonize or to, uh, you know, uh, claim some kind of territory that, that everything here is integral and everything outside of it is not, but, but rather to, see really where what is the the um what is the matrix of thought and of call of of discourse that we're even having this conversation within it's there we're not we're not actually in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. uh if this is a you know kind of uh improvised cafe stand uh in the wasteland if you will or whatever whatever is uh you know however you might describe the, um, the spiritual landscape of uh, contemporary life, uh, it, we, we do have a rich soil to draw on. We do have rich networks of thought to draw on. And there, there are no clear, hard boundaries uh, to these networks. But they do have to be entered into. We do have to in, reclaim them, in, in a sense, and reshape them. Uh, for our own purposes and for our own time and place. And so I think this is part, almost what we're implicitly doing in studying Gebser, in studying Aurobindo, uh, and then in all the various other 
lines of thought and um, uh, the capillaries, you know, of of inspiration that connect these various threads. I I like that we could be bringing that forth and bringing cl clarity and coherence to it in some sense, like making it useful actually, uh, because it's it's not really just to be found in a package somewhere. Uh, and I'm not proposing to package it exactly, but I, I think it. I think that there's. Well, we have a whole jumble of things to read. <laughs> I would like just to know what in what order we're going to read them. That would be, uh, you know, a great starting point. Um, I, I find like I, I I need to plan things out a little bit more uh, to allow the time to take in the various things or to to um, uh, tend to the various sort of parts of the garden, if you will. There's writers underground here, there's metapsychosis stuff there, there's different conversations. So to have a sense of like where, if, if it's not a linear like productivity burn chart, it's mm -hmm. some kind of map of the garden and what's been planted where and what's growing and who's watering th that or the other thing. We need some way of, you know, <laughs> just... And, and there are different, excuse me, for interrupting, but there are different rates of growth and yeah. different rates of decay. Mm -hmm. uh, some things need to, you know, that that Gertian idea of the plant and the different phases of it. And it's very much like um, watching a, a good three-act play, you know, a beginning, a rising action, a climax, and a denouement. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he said everything that is ripe wants to die. Um, so. I think that I, I do enjoy that moving from um, d different group with a different project and uh, we may belong to more than one group and we may belong to different groups and there, there, are, there are different rates of growth. Some may have climax, some may not have climaxed yet. Um, some may never um, get off the ground at all. Uh, some may be in that senescent phase where they just are ready to, uh, you know, become ready for the compost heap. And, and that's what I think is so fascinating about this, these developments here is because we may be in groups that are in different phases mm -hmm. and being able to, that's why I think it's so crucial that we get really sensitive to those rhythms. Um, and I think this is the a huge challenge for us um, because we're in this uh, technology, which is, uh, abiotic we are biotic our, our this technology is not and um you know it doesn't have these kinds of rhythms these diurnal rhythms these uh, ultradian rhythms these seasonal rhythms which we are embedded in and we cannot get out of and maintain any kind of coherence whatsoever so for me as um as an activist uh, I really require a kind of momentum and uh, a compassionate regard for others who are so committed is just a natural part of it. Uh, but that's very hard to uh, to activate, to maintain uh, in most of the, certainly in Facebook world, right? which is why I've, I've exited from that. So um, this is, is has become an alternative way of knowing and hopefully um, different kinds of styles of learning can be appreciated rather than having this factory model, which we've all been raised in, um, being, the own, being the norm. Um, so, um, you know, I just hope this can be a celebration of, a, of our different styles, which I believe is a synonym for spirit. You know, yeah. Style is spirit. Uh, and that, that unique spin that happens when pattern and and the the soil, it, it it all those conditions are there. Something quite unique that you know is quite un, we, no one can predict what that could be like. So, I think that's what why why we're studying all these geniuses from the past is because they they did the best they could to map it out, and they were probably dreaming about us, mm -hmm. <laughs> just as we dream about. Uh, the the kids uh, who are coming into the world now and we have a responsibility for them and then what happens after that generation the generation after that 
think this is a this is really hard to maintain that kind of long term fascination when we're being bombarded by stuff by you know, people wanting to sell us something. And I'm sure you've all had that experience if you're having a conversation with someone that you really like and then all of a sudden you realize they're trying to sell you something. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, you know? And that's I'm that's not happened here. <laughs> so I'm very grateful. Although everybody has something that they want to produce, but I don't feel like anyone's selling me something. So thanks for let me get that out in the open. So, so the thing about style, I agree with John about that. Um, because it, if I think about why am I here in this cafe right now? Well, ultimately, it's because of the Slaughter Dyke reading room. That's what brought me in to the Infinite Conversations. And I know that some of you came in for other reasons. I think some of you came in, I don't know whether you came in for Gebs or, or for other, but there were, each of us had a different connection. Um, I'm hoping that the minor gesture may bring in one or two individuals maybe who are not currently part of the group uh, because it's a different reading in, in a way. And I think each different reading or activity will bring in some people from outside the current group. Um, but all of this is being done within a similar style. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, I mean, we sit and we talk on a video screen to each other. We're all sitting down. We're sipping away at our coffee sometimes or munching something in the background. Um, but all of that is a question of style, too. So if I'm thinking out loud about this, what if we were all sitting on an exercise bike and we were bicycling away as we did our talking? That's a very different style of mm -hmm. engagement. And it will bring in a completely different kind of person if we did that kind of thing as opposed to this kind of thing. Uh, you know, and there might be other, you know, I think about, some of the cafes that opened around town. So there's a cafe that was organized. So it's a coffee shop, but it has a ceramic making activity inside the coffee shop. And it brings in young families with kids so that they can make ceramics and they can paint it inside this sort of coffee shop. Well, again, it's a different style. It's a, it, that's a making style, right? And, and this is a talking style. So if we were, instead of talking, we were making stuff and we were talking to each other as we made them, that again would bring in a different kind of group. So if I was to say, you know, so one way is to look, talk about, is to think about the texts that we read or the projects that we write. But another way is to think about what are the activities that are going on in the background, as it were, or in relation to what we're doing, if it would bring in the different kind of person. So, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, John, if you want to. Erin Manning, she does, is that called Touch Lab? What is her uh, organization called? Fence Lab. Sense Lab. Sense Lab. Sense Lab. Yeah. Very, very innovative group work she does. And it's not what, you know, Sense Lab, it's, you know, I'm, I'm in a university environment. I, I think, you know, it's probably got, you know, state-of-the-art technology. No, 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 nada, nada. The Sense Lab is simply a place that brings people together to make things, to do things together. It's all human-based. Yeah. None of it is technology-based. Yeah, I'm very, that's very compelling to me. So what I was going to, I wanted to underscore what uh, both John and Jeff, Jeffrey had just said, because I think to a certain extent, what you were saying, Marco, is our, it already happens. I, I kind of see a lot of things. Yes, there was a slaughtered like reading group that was set up like there was a, um, a Gapeser reading group. And those were kind of, organizational, organized events, if you will. 
but for the but since then and in, in, in the course of what we've uh, what we've going on whether it's been even the planning sessions that uh, Caroline has has uh, initiated and that you guys have been trying to, to work on that this is kind of a spin-off from or whether it's the writers uh, group that you're putting together it's the it's the Aaron Manning reading that's taking place in a little different setting those those little sprouts are are being sent off and and we're all working with what we know for the moment but the the thing that i find so encouraging about our working is that everybody knows i'm limited by what i'm doing right now and i'm looking for ways and i this is what i hear people saying i'm looking for ways to not be so limited by this you know so there's that that self awareness that 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 self reflection that says how do i how do i leverage this how do i take this off how do i move it in another direction how do i change the style so and we have done some of those things we've had we've had workshop kinds of ca cafe sessions which you normally wouldn't find in a cafe we've also almost had almost lecture kinds of things we have a lot of different kinds of things all things that we know but we i can also see where that's it's it's enriching one another it's cross fertilizing again and so we're going to be come up with new ideas there it's going to start coming right now we have a very small delicate little plant kind of thing that's growing and we're just hoping it's going to root out that you know and it's going to go somewhere else and i and i think it will because we are becoming self-aware of what it is that we're aware of that we're doing you know and so we you know really get that loop and as long as long as that's there and we don't don't become complacent about what we're doing like oh I think the cafes are great, but I don't. That doesn't mean they don't have to be anything else or couldn't be anything else, because you know, great is simply a reflection of a momentary um, experience of something or or a, a commentary on it. That's all. So, so I think you know the potential is there, and I see things coming up, and and you know, I'm I'm actually uh, very positive about what what this can turn into and the key thing is that for each one of these little variations that comes just like jeffrey said like aaron, aaron manning reading other kinds of people and others will come into that and they will bring theirs in too and one of the things that if anybody ever looks at any of these cafe sessions they will know this is a place that i can i can express myself and interact with others without fear of rebuttal reprisal I'm not going to sell them anything, you know. There's none of that. There's absolutely none of that. There's just people talking to each other about really odd things sometimes, and maybe in odd kind of ways. But there, there's there's really nothing other than the interaction in the end, within the limits of what we know, because we're sitting and talking to each other. And that and that is a very positive signal for someone else to see. I don't know many people who are, would be willing to just come to a group they didn't even know and sit around and talk. But, you know, well, Lisa came and she chatted and we chatted and we talked about her plumber and we talked, you know, it's because that's all part of what was there at the time. And it doesn't disturb talking about what she did at the Gapes of Conference or how we can talk about other accesses to language or, you know, how it's shaping our, our understanding of reality and things. You say it's all part of that. That doesn't happen everywhere, hmm. and, but it happens here. And I think that's it's good to note that. It's good to reinforce that. And we, we can do there can there can be more of that. But it is it's happening. I I, I see it actually happening. Because each one of these little groups is going to take on a little different flavor. They're going to do a few different things, and they're going to go off in other directions. But they're not going to depart from us. That's the thing. They're not separating this. Now well, I'm going to go off and do my own. No, you're going to you're going to do what you do. But I'm going to know how you got there. Mm -hmm. So I will feel connected to that. Yeah. For that very reason. And so when I drop in and I look at, you know, even if when I drop in every once in a while and, and read through the, the Sloterdijk thread, you know, you know okay. They're still at it. <laughs> they're enjoying it, you know. And, and I, I feel good about that part of it. I go, I don't understand a word they're saying, but hey, they seem to be happy. <laughs> I, I know where you are and what you're doing and, and why, and and that's good. You know, so you haven't gone anywhere. 
Do you want to say something, Doug? I wanted to say that in a certain sense, we rely on the outsiders to come in or the, the guests. Maybe that's a better word than outsiders, but each on the cafe, if it's not a direct guest like Lisa, um, mm -hmm. just simply having kind of a guest reading, uh, we, we kind of embody the person just like um, Jennifer Gidley right now, where mm -hmm. we've kind of infused her thought and it's not that we we want to have her sell her ideas to us or we don't want to sell the idea of the, the cosmos uh, cafe or the cosmos in general to her. If we reach out to her saying, Hey, can you introduce a book or something like that? It's, it's simply a strong, deep interest we have um, to the, to those that are asking the, the deeper questions um, and tapping into the, that, realm of thought that we can't always articulate amongst ourselves no matter how much of the bibliography you you might identify with or check off your list <laughs> um you you all we all um can always learn from the spiral spiraling off as you're talking about it um the routine that's forming the underground reading groups the the other forms like that oh Doug, did you get my message today? I sent a message to you and to TJ, and TJ responded, but you haven't responded yet. But I'm hoping we can do a little spinoff um, because you and I and TJ live in the same time zone. So, uh, and TJ's, I got the idea of, Je of uh, Jennifer Gidlick from TJ. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just wanting to... My, my response to that, I did read it, is simply propose some dates um, okay okay I, I mentioned i was away for a week so i'm catching up with quite oh, a bit um my so wife we'll... just quit work um uh -huh. for she's coming. yeah she's eight months pregnant at this point and, wow uh, so i might have to pull some extra hours to get some extra bucks to keep going but uh besides well, we'll that yeah just throw out some dates yeah, he's he's busy for the next two weeks, but so we'll we'll we'll, we'll coordinate that. But I'm just looking at that as sort of an example of mm -hmm. because of the constraints of the time zones that that are imposed upon us. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. We've made these Tuesday cafes happen for a certain amount of us can become regulars because it it can fit our, our the, the schedule. Um, but there are some people like TJ, I believe, who would be a very valuable contributor, and he has contributed when he can, but uh, he's just, it's not conducive to his schedule. So I just wanted to accommodate uh, his participation in this uh, next phase as much as possible, if he, to the extent that he wants to and the extent that you can. So we could, you, the three of us, because we're in the same time zone, could coordinate that. And we wouldn't need anybody else to uh, agree or disagree or figure out their schedule because, you know, these big, I think this is about the rhythm. The weekly meetups on Tuesday Cafe have a certain rhythm and mm. a certain constraint. We're not going to read War and Peace <laughs> you know, in the next week and talk about it on next Tuesday. We, may, we, can, do a, we can do an article, though. Mm. And um, I think that's what that's what I think the cafes are good at, at, uh, you know, selecting, you know, in a very organic way, um, you know, an article or something that we can manage during the week and um, set that up. But I think the, the larger readings like the Aaron Manning and the, the, the soul, the soul mountain reading that you're, you're organizing, Doug, um, those are sort of different purposes and they will have their own unique kind of rhythm. Um, and also the, the the life divine, which um, we're, we're just putting, trying to put together um, after sh the slaughter dike reading is, has been completed. So I think that's going to be a, a, that's a very large book, and I think it's the the, the more we can prepare ourselves, the more uh, effective of reading I think that will be. For everybody. Has anyone here read the life divine or attempted to read it? Just I have. Yet? I've attempted it on many occasions 
to me, it's like Mount Everest. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a. Well, it comes out of that corner of the world, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Moby Dick. It, yeah. it took me decades to get through Moby yeah. Dick, but when I did, I'm. I'm glad I did. I learned more about Wells than I ever wanted to know. <laughs> I did finish it. And I think this is a, an equivalent sort of a, um, kind of that's it's that kind of a book. So but so is so is Ever Present Origin. I think Gebser is sort of one of these gigantic tomes that uh, it's so much more fun to deal with when you're when you're reading it with a group. So that's another seed that's kind of waiting in uh, the reserves there. It's uh, to resurrect the, the Gebser reading at some point, which I'm not waiting impatiently for. I'm definitely patient enough to wait a year or two or three or however long it might take. Or if it never happens, I'll get around to it. Right. Um, but yeah, Next lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's also true, Marco, that... Um, the recordings we've done, we put on YouTube, but we do nothing really to promote them. Uh, mm. But, well, perhaps I'm wrong about that, but, but it seems to me that over the long term, those recordings may lead people back to us as well. And have, actually. Like Eduardo, for example. Right. Um, a few others have become participants. Um, through seeing the YouTube videos. Uh, so I'm like, I don't have a lot of, I don't have a desire to do a lot of active marketing and a lot of seeking attention or seeking viewers or listeners, but to have ways of just putting the material out uh, in as efficient uh, and thoughtful a way, a way as possible. Uh, I like archival work, I like metadata, um, I like good descriptions and summaries. Um, I think it would be it would be nice too if someone wanted to. I don't mean us here, but somebody who just liked what we were saying and wanted to be part of the conversation. To um, sometimes we sometimes something blo blossoms in the conversation, or there's a particular insight that maybe you know you don't have to listen to two hours to 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 uh, appreciate. And a five-minute clip or something like that could be plucked out and, and posted on metapsychosis, uh, for example. Um, I would or, like, or to going off of that, if you I'd interrupt here, um, mm -hmm. just simply posting two or three minutes, as we do with most YouTube videos, um, kind of saying, "Here's the moment to focus on." Uh, mm -hmm. Not necessarily making it a separate thing, but a part of the discussion thread that we go through. But that might right. be too self-referential. I don't know. I think I, I have a, uh, a knee-jerk response to that. Um, I think if we start thinking about turning this into a product for the public, I think it will kill any spontaneity really fast. The only reason I can function at all in an agreeable way, I think, is because it's open and it's closed. You know, I think open closure is very important that we can be spontaneous and thoughtful and creative and we can, because we can make a lot of mistakes and we can say things that make maybe no sense at the moment. And then all of a sudden something emerges that's, that's surprising and, and um, can attract some attention. But I think all of that uh, confusion and, and mayhem and uh, stuff that didn't quite fit s creates the conditions for those moments. But I think if we're just like looking for highlights, I think we're going to scare it away. Uh, it's very ephemeral. It's Hold very on. subtle. And I, I I'm all for selling things. But I think this is this, I, I think the keeping having it as an archive is what's really precious because I can go back to the Getsu reading years after it happened and I could look at it again. And, and read the text and listen to the commentaries that people are making and probably come away with, with a very different kind of experience. And I believe others may, may have that experience too, who weren't in the group, but they have, may have an interest in Gebser and they may benefit from it. And that would be great. Um, but anyway, that's my, my um, that's probably a, a psychic boundary. I'm, I'm, 
I, I think I have to have a, a permeable boundary um, so that I can get information flowing back and forth. Um, but I think if I start thinking about people watching this who don't know any of us and who may be giving us a thumbs up or thumbs down, I think if I think about that at all, I, I will feel like shutting up or being very careful about what I say. So I'm just sharing that with you because I mean, I, I might get over that, but. Um, yeah, you know, I like your open and close. I think we could sell besides this. <laughs> Cause <laughs> I, I don't think I, that's something I could sell very effectively to tell you the truth. Anyway. So I, I like your idea of open and closed. Um, it, I know we do a lot of reflection here on kind of the Quaker groups, but my initial impression of Quakerism was that I don't believe 90% of what they originally believed. And if I wasn't with this particular group here in Kentucky, I, I wouldn't be a part of Quakerism. Um, but there's that kind of open feeling that anybody can walk into that church at any time or meeting house at any time and be a part of it. But when they see what's there, they're not necessarily going to want to participate uh, simply because it's not their cup of tea or an hour of silence is a bit odd for some people. Um, but it, we, we leave ourselves completely open, but yeah, to that one of their main ideas is to not um, be and evangelical um, to not, reach out to anyone for a a good reason, because that's, that's intrusive and everything you just said. Um, But there are a few that will kind of stumble on the website. We'll stumble at the door and kind of see who's inside and stop on in for a bit. Right. I think that, I think uh, the transparency happens when no one's out to, uh, I have nothing to lose and nothing to gain. And then, then I can be transparent, but I think it's, um, and I think that, that I hope we will produce something that can be marketed and sold. Uh, I think uh, some of us aspire to write and create something that would be of use and delight to other people. And I think that can be marketed, but I think there needs to be a, a we need to have that writer's group that protects our, uh, our, our deep, dark, hidden and occult uh, aspects of our natures so that we can then uh, externalize that and put it into some kind of form that then at the right stage needs to be find an audience. So that's where I think that uh, if you want to find something to sell, a product to sell, that would be the direction to go in. But I think these kind of forums can create a buzz and can start our imaginations working in ways that are um, more, going to be more effective because we've had a chance to put into our own words uh, the, the, the theory of the week that we've been working with. So I think that's where these, uh, these uh, collaborative sparks start to get ignited. But I don't know that the YouTube world is going to be, um, you know. I think the sense of my comment was that, um, uh, so, you know, in a way I was lucky because I started looking for Slaughter Dyke material when this was being announced so i came in through that mechanism but if i came in a year later and the slaughter dick couples would be done by this group then the videos that have been done would are still extremely useful for somebody who's coming to bubbles for the first time and to try and make sense of it uh, you know, I looked at John Ebert's, some of his videos on bubbles before we got to the, to the actual group that we did. Uh, and even now, um, you know, I missed the Gebser reading and I started to think, well, you know, you have all those recordings and you have those as discussions online. So I've started to, I haven't really got started, but I have in mind as one of the mm. things to do to go through the material and maybe read Gebser on my own using the video footage as my own guide to it. And so I, I look at that and I think, well, if I can do that, I'm sure there are other people out there 
So I wasn't necessarily thinking about it as a marketable project, right? But as a as a an offering, a, a, in the sense of what Marco was saying about a gift, it's a gift right. in a way that we offer the world to provide an entry point to some of these texts that are not easy to read on your own. <laughs> they sure aren't. Mm-hmm. And so there is at least this recorded conversation about these texts. And I think uh, that there will be people who are interested in that. Uh, I, I, I agree, Jeffrey. I think what's unique about these uh, is, you know, there are lots of brilliant lectures from Oxford and Cambridge who, who are talking about every, any wow. philosophy you want. But I don't think that they give, uh, give what we're giving. Um, and I think that's, this is very uh, a unique kind of offering. So I, I agree. Um, you know, I like that the, this, we're not um, expert driven and we're not, you know, um, we're not just uh, bringing in a brilliant person to come in and, and lecture to us. Uh, I think this is uh, part of the great aesthetic pleasures is this kind of um, resonating together with a really difficult text uh, has a tremendous pleasure. So um, if that could be communicated to others who aren't in the script that in some future, you know, who come across this or, and then want to join us for some future reading, I think that would be great. Half the time we, we announce on, on our, our, uh, our sessions, I didn't understand anything what he was talking about. It is, you know, and it's said right out there. And when you're struggling reading something, and you have a group that's saying, well, I didn't get it. <laughs> you know, it's like you feel, okay, it's not just me that's being dumb. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh. <laughs> exactly. Well, one, one thing I would like to do is to, not for the purposes of selling, but for the purposes of presentation, uh, put the, the sessions on a page where there's an easier way of seeing what they all are and seeing the overview and when they took place. And uh, e- even maybe like give, setting some, um, some kind of not chapter breaks, we might say. Uh, like this meeting here is a kind of chapter break or it's a kind of the beginning of the next chapter. Uh, and I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah, like so, we've done the, the, we did we've done fourteen now uh, sessions that have titles and are ordered in, in the forum, and and there were a, a few conversations that uh, we we previously had, like one that Ed and I had with uh, Greg Thomas, uh, uh, for example, a couple of others like that. I, I've done a number of individual conversations, maybe ten or twelve, uh, that are on the forum in one place or another. But they're hard. I, I think that they're not as easy to find uh, and they're not as well presented as they could be. And, um, and as well with things coming up like the Aurobindo reading or Aaron Manning or what have you, it would be good to be able to see what's happening and when and how to participate if one wishes to. Uh, so, this is that would almost address the kind of underlying tension that I feel around, you know, how we're doing what we're doing and what are we doing, if we had more of um, just a calendar, just some kind of sense of what's coming up. That would allow me to plan my reading because, you know, in, in the midst of daily life, obligations, commitments, work, etc., I need to really carve out my reading time and make sure I give it enough time. Um, it would allow, I think, for more preparation, better preparation, if we could see what's coming. Not that it's set in stone either. I mean, things could shift and you know, organically emerge. But um, if I know I have some, something coming in a couple of weeks, I may go pick out the book from the library or I'll read up or watch a YouTube video or what have you. I'll start, I'll start orienting my attention toward it. Uh, and having some sort of phase of time before the event when we're going to discuss it uh, allows me to 
you know, come to the event with as much, as much presence of mind, as much clarity, or really a more developed sense of what my questions are even um, uh, as possible. So I, 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 one of the things I hoped we would do here is, is at least bring these various kind of things, these topics into, into the common space, because we do want, you know, we've already set in motion uh, things like the Aurobindo reading, Aaron Manning, etc. So, um, and, and in my mind, sometimes they kind of jumble up. So, if, and I don't think it's just in my mind that they jumble up. Um, and, and then, and that leads us, that, that I think would allow us to like, come to a, a session like this with as little bad noise as possible because there isn't confusion around uh, exactly how we're doing what we're doing, when it's happening, etc. cetera. Um, but then after the fact, to know that it's, the video is going to be uh, posted, that um, there's going to be a, uh, a, a, a familiar place uh, to go and see uh, where you know, the, the recording as well as any conversation connected to the event and that if there's somebody you want to invite to participate, you can point them to this place where they can uh, catch up and get a sense for you know what we've been what we've been talking about, um, or just share something. Share if you think of somebody that you want to share a, little, a clip with, it's available, and right. uh, and it's presentable. Uh, that's all I really want. I, I don't think I'm, I don't think the cafe is a great entrepreneurial idea <laughs> it's right. just, I, I think you're, you're talking about you know some clips that are effective that you want to share i think that's great as long as we have the whole piece available for those who, archival types like myself who will mm-hmm. watch the whole thing mm-hmm. more than once because yeah. i'm into discourse analysis and i'm studying mm-hmm. This is like a Petri dish, a little experiment, a little this, a little that. It's an alchemical kind of process, and I need the whole thing. Right, right. To chop it up into five-minute little would be just disastrous for my purposes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You yeah, know? yeah. I, I didn't mean to inhibit anyone from doing that. I think it's great as long as, you know, the whole, the whole, the whole enchilada is available. And I'm very interested in what happens in between these uh, – these uh, individual sessions over time. So this may be something uh, a decade from now I can go back and look at and say, oh, that's where that seed was planted. And this is what happened next. And this is what happened next. And this is what happened out of that. Um, And I think that kind of interest is not widely shared (laughs) because it's a very narrow kind of interest I have, but that's what I'm, um, that's one of the things that keeps me motivated to do this yeah. is, um, you know, because I'm really interested in this collaborative learning and, you know, awakening up, waking up these uh, dormant capacities that we all have. And if they're, and they, they probably will not come to any kind of fruition if they're not supported. And I think that's what we, we all have often felt, you know, we're sort of loners, we're hermits. We like to hang out in the library. Um, but I think these, forums really uh, nurture and sponsor us in finding our own voice, hmm. bringing that forward. So yeah. this is great. I think um, a video archive, I guess, kind of organized with video one, video two, and then a little description of what each of the video would be a great tool to have on the site. Because I must admit, even finding the Gebser visit videos, I tried several searches and I got nada. And I finally had to go through, you know, so the, the search, there's something weird about the way the search works. I think I finally understood it. It searches by channel first. So you, there doesn't seem, I don't know if there's a global search, but. There is. If you're in a channel, uh, it will search within that channel. channel. And there's actually a little checkbox which says search within this channel. If you uncheck it, it'll, okay. it'll do a global search. But um, I, 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 that, I, I would like to post you know, the Gebser videos uh, as well as uh, the, Cos- the cafe videos on 
the metapsychosis site, just the videos, just so you could yeah, see them outside, you know, in a, in a um, contained place. In the forums mm-hmm. are kind of frothing. There's a lot going on. Uh, so it's not, it's not as easy to find yeah. exactly, you know, the series you're looking for. Uh, and anyway, I mean, that, that's something that, that if there's no objection, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, it's just mm-hmm. a matter of, of time and, and um, uh, getting to it. I, I don't know, Johnny, where you get the time to do everything. You're <laughs> always reading. You're always way ahead on the reading. You yeah, know. All the writing that you do, and you're doing a, a discourse analysis, and I don't know what else. But uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so, what are we? Uh, so, what are we reading next? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that. Let's get. Let's get practical. Let's get down to brass tacks here. We've been kicking around this Jennifer Gidley. Uh, TJ turned me on to her. I think she's very worthwhile. He was talking about looking at the appendix. There's three appendixes. No, three appendices. appendices. Yeah. How do you pronounce that? Appendices. Okay. Yeah, just like the one that you got, except that you don't have to cut it out. <laughs> anyway, he, he was mentioning that, and I thought, oh, I don't know her, but I looked at her. And I think you posted something, Marco, by Hampson is his name. Similar. Um... Yeah. Similar angle, I think. Yeah, I think they're colleagues, uh, and um, they, she knows his work, he knows her work. So um, anyway, I thought that she's bringing in Steiner and Gebser and Arbindo and, and Wilbur and looking at each of them and, and what they focus on and what they ignore. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's a, a very useful service she's providing because mm-hmm. um, I think it there's a lot of gaps that get filled in by that kind of inquiry, and I think she's very good at it. Um, so I would love to see what you guys think about her. We could focus on her. It, maybe not next time or the time after that, but uh, because she's a the the paper is about two hundred pages. So it's a large paper, and that mm-hmm. is hard to read online. Like mm-hmm. Ed, you were talking about, it's hard to read online. It yeah. is. I read half of it, and I was like, my eyeballs yeah. were wow. <laughs> raw. But anyway, that that maybe maybe uh, that we don't need to read a whole the whole thing, maybe just the appendix, like TJ said. Um, there's a PDF version of that paper. Uh, yeah. And there's a little PDF icon on the webpage at mm-hmm. org. So you could print it out. I don't read things online. I, I, right. if it's more than well, I five it. pages. I it's 223 pages. Oh. Dude. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Like, when he said it's large, he, he meant it. <laughs> yeah. That's why we were. That's why we were talking about do, doing the appendix because we all have a background in in integral, and we know most of these writers. So I think his her appendix might be enough to to do in a week. That, that's one or another alternative. T, TJ's read the whole thing, for example, and if he, I, I know he has his own preferences, which doesn't bother me at all. And if he says, I found this part of the paper particularly interesting, you know, whether it's chapter three or, you know, the last half of chapter two and the first part of chapter four, I, that doesn't matter either. But, you know, he found this particularly interesting. And if he did, then that's motivation enough for me to figure out, to, to want to participate and see, well, okay, well, why did he find that so interesting? And, and what do I know that I can contribute to this and what she, she bring it in here? Because those are also things that motivate me at any rate to read, you know, the rest of the paper. I will eventually read the whole thing. You know, I just have to find the time to print it out and, and, and do that. But, um, you know, we can also read, ch- you know, the chunks of things, and whether it's an appendix or something else. Mm-hmm. So if anybody finds a section, you know, John's really into, you know, German idealism and Steiner and everything that's Teutonic in that, that, that regard. But that's also a, you know, a point where you go, okay, well, we've never really looked at anything, even though it's third ha- third hand, so to speak. This time around, that can inspire any of us or all of us to say, well, maybe I'd like to take a look at something from Steiner in the original and, and get a feel for what it is that he's doing and how he's going about doing it. You know, that's a, those are the, these are the, the sprouts that come because, well, that kind of hit me and that struck me. And, and so I'll go off and check that out. And then somebody brings it back and says, you know, well, maybe we could think about it from, from, from this angle as well. You know, so, the, you know, there's a there's a rich variety of ways that we could approach it. Well, mm. well you know, it, the Appendix C 
is uh, on the Paleolith Paleolithic art. And I know, I know you did Merlin Merlin Donald, and he's a sort of anthropologist who's looking at the, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. the awakening cognitive capacities from the hominids mm -hmm. and the Neanderthals, all that, and looking at their art. And yeah. uh, I, I think that would be, if we're gonna do one appendix, the C would be, I think, interesting to do with a movie. Remember that film? I think Jeremy showed it at the Gebser Society. Um, there's a, and it's uh, on you, and it's on uh, Netflix. The Forgotten Dream, the Cave of Forgotten yeah. Dreams. The ca Cave of Forgotten Dreams. Mm -hmm. Or whatever. You guys, so, do you guys know that movie? Yeah, I've seen it. I've yeah, I think that time. movie and that Appendix C that she does might be a fun thing to play with. Mm -hmm. um, that's just a suggestion, because I, uh, I think that um, the archaic is uh, the most confusing like, stage for me. Yeah, yeah. We, we can Among go, the structures, we're... that's the one that's the most bizarre. Yeah. I think this is something she points out, how Steiner and Gebser mm -hmm. and uh, Wilbur have very different takes. Mm -hmm. uh, Gebser and Steiner are closer than Wilbur um, in, mm -hmm. in approaches to the archaic. But I think she, she clarifies some of that confusion that I've always sort of felt, but I didn't know, didn't know where it was coming from. And she sort of makes it, lays it out in the part that I've read so far. So, so I, I thought anyone would enjoy that. I will follow you guys down that road. <laughs> yeah. But I have to tell you one of the things, because we've been thinking about, because in a way we're going back to base. I mean, some of these are newer writers, but we're also going back to basics and so one of the writers I want to go back to and we comes up, up in various ways is Bateson. Right. I love Bateson. Yeah. Uh, because Bateson isn't easy to get even no. though I've read it many times. Mm. I think a group think about some of his more difficult texts would be really useful. Yep, I agree. Uh, I'm thinking like the stuff he did on play, for instance, which is a very interesting topic. Is this one? In conversations. Yes. Well, I'm thinking steps to an ecology of mind, but mm -hmm. because the more difficult pieces are in there. But um, I think that we could do. I have that one too. We could do <laughs> like the, the, the paper on play and, yeah. you know, would be one that I would pick out. But yeah. and then maybe a few others. I, I really liked. Um, Mary, his daughter's book on um, toward, towards an epistemology of the sacred, yeah, uh, had some really good pieces on more of this kind of integral thinking, but in a Batesonian way, that is kind of interesting too. So we may be able to pick out a piece from from that book as well. Mm -hmm. it, it, she had some fantastic what they were um, dialogues uh, between father and daughter in the in the beginning of each section that's that wonderful into these questions in really interesting ways so that would be something that would be fun to read so, that is those are fun um so i throw that out as as a possibility too yeah there's also um he has two daughters catherine catherine ann bateson and he has nora bateson mm -hmm. nora nora just came out with a new book um which i read and uh and she's it's a beautiful book um and i have it around here somewhere oh it's a it's very it's a very short book too it's not very thick and uh it's extremely readable so that's a possibility too let me make a suggestion um we have that thread on the forum that's upcoming events and planning i mm -hmm. think we should close that and kind of wrap that up and any, anything we want to carry over to this next phase, we should um, put into a new topic, a new thread, where we, we uh, maybe project out this next season, say in t up until the Aurobindo reading, up until whenever that is going to begin. And then we'll see how many weeks we have and what's on the table. Uh, there are things that we didn't get to last time that I'm still interested in, like... Uh, the, the, the metamodernism idea, I know. Um, but The Listening Society, I started that book. I haven't finished it. 
I know there are a few others. We may even have a potential guest uh, for, for that episode or that issue or that session or whatever we call it. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, what if I, uh, you know, close that thread, start a new one, mm-hmm. copy the links over, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Good. we could start to sort out just when we're going to do what based on how long it is. And, and also what we can, like how we can mm, position uh, the, the, the conversation f- to anticipate this climb up Mount Everest uh, mm-hmm. that, that we'll be doing with Aurobindo, um, which I think would be a really special event, actually. I, um, like, I, I, I think it'll be one of the, one of the, a period of time that, that, uh, is intensive, like that, that intensifies, that generates something. And as the Gebser reading was, it, it was really, um, uh, time well spent. Okay. Time well spent. It was, it was, it was galvanizing in a way. Uh, and, uh, I want to be a, a different person at the end of the reading. Yeah. I don't, it's not just a exercise. I, nope. I want to, uh, to be somewhere to, to go somewhere with it. Uh, I don't have a great way of articulating what that is. Um, but if, where does it, but I want to go with our window, really. I want to, mm-hmm. see, I want to go where the text take, takes us. And uh, so it, that's super mind. Then, you know, super mind mm-hmm. it is super mind or bust. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, well, this is Banerjee's book. Seven Quartets of Becoming. You know that Banerjee guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is a very sophisticated text. I mean, he's really brilliant, man. And he knows Western philosophy extremely well. So I think this would be a good companion. To that, take and that's journey. based on Aurobindo's yoga practice? This is a transformative yoga psychology based on the diaries of Sri Aurobindo. Uh-huh. Uh, I know TJ looked at uh, the human cycle. Mm-hmm. And... Um, we could dialogue with TJ about this too, because I'm sure he's very interested in where this goes. So, yeah, that's a huge. I think we, I should. I think it would be really um, could be very transformative. And mm-hmm. I think having Gebser and Orbindo having gone through Schlatterdai, I think we will be moving in a very healthy direction. We could become. This is comparative philosophy this is almost unheard of (laughs) outside of an academic setting that we could make this happen and it's over a two 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 year period three year period Um, yeah more it'll be 2016 we read read gebser so yeah yeah 16 17 and 18 so three years ago you told me we would be doing this oh come on (laughs) no way (laughs) You're, you're gonna get people to commit to such a thing but it looks like we're on the cusp of that. <laughs> yeah, okay. you're drawn. <laughs> How much of a profit, you know? Oh, yeah. So we didn't have to commit you. You committed yourself. Right, right. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a minor miracle. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing how the, the group dynamics form around the Aurobindo readings because it did have profound impacts for me personally. And I think on a kind of single personal developmental level he Arabonda has quite a bit to say so Did to you? take that group dynamic into effect is going to be the most rewarding aspect for me i, I want to take Arabindo out of the kind of self mm-hmm. have you read this text have you read which one have you read doug did you I've read, read the life divine you read the whole thing wow. not the very last chapter because i felt like it was going to be kind of summing it all up and I wasn't quite there yet, but um, yeah, it was you, very nice. And then the- so You have a head start on this one. I don't feel like I have a head start at all. I feel like I've <laughs> and just been completely, the, there's all sorts of stuff going on in my cosmos right now. So, or Aurobindo cosmos. And it, I need a few of you to kind of take those pieces and let them float in space rather than warp through yeah. time and space. Cool. So in addition to creating a new thread for the upcoming Cosmos talks, why don't 
I create one also for the Aurobindo. So we can start just logistically planning how that those talks will be conducted. I think a few other people will want to read this. It won't just be us. Uh, Eric Weiss has already said, um, I, I have a friend, Ben, um, Ben Williams in Europa. He's a, a professor of religious of yoga philosophy. He's a, he did his dissertation, uh, dissertation on Abhivana Gupta, uh, and lived in Pondicherry, uh, lived, uh, in or near Auroville for, for a while. He'd like to read with us as well. And it's not the kind of thing I'm, you know, going to post on Facebook, I think, but I want those who could really add to the conversation and to the whole field effect, uh, to, um, I want to invite them, uh, and figure out just how to make that smooth. So right. that'll be a, maybe another conversation and maybe Doug, we could connect on that as well on, on terms of, uh, logistics and videos and how to get things, how to kind of set up a pipe <laughs> at the risk of hydraulic metaphors, a, a production pipeline to, mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, make it easy for people to just focus on the book and focus on the conversations and the practice if, if they choose to relate to it that way. I think somehow we can change our climbing Mount Everest, uh, metaphor into climbing soul mountain potentially so we'll <laughs> but not everybody has participated in that i'm saying but no i i do see a lot of connections between um gao sing jan i need to work my chinese but or mandarin Xinjiang. But, Xinjiang. um but yeah i i'd be willing to help you out with that and uh, also if when you get a chance to take a look at the soul mountain page that i put together and Oh, I saw that. So Critique it. So I, I don't know what I'm missing or if uh, anything needs to be added there or how to add it to metapsychosis, if that's what you planned on doing. Okay. So it looks so good. Talk about that at another time. I really like this author, Gal. I, I've been reading uh, a little bit since small mountain. I haven't quite dug fully in yet. But I also have a, the book that contains his noble lecture, The Case for Literature. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's... Yeah, I, it's. There, there will I be a lot to discuss about it. With it. Yeah, there's some, there's, there's some things I'd like to, you know, grapple with a bit in, in it. But um, I'm really glad we're reading him, and I like his voice, and I like his soul. Actually, <laughs> I like I like who he is. So, uh, why don't we wrap up? We're we're over a couple hours now. Does do we? Hmm. So are we all in a good good place to to close this? Sure. Okay. Um, I just real quick, I did get cut off for maybe five or ten minutes. Just wondering if we did set up anything for next week or if that was kind of still determined later on in the conversation that falls. <laughs> I don't think we it, did. It was TBD as far as I understood. <laughs> All right. Well, let's keep it that way so we don't go another 20 minutes. <laughs> All right. Well, let, let, let's make that, I guess, the uh, a to do um, after this first thing is probably. posted. All right. Well, okay. thanks. All. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to see everyone. Bye bye. Have fun. Take care. <laughs>